All right, here's another problem. So this one is uh, chapter six, problem 32. This one says that uh, you are, you and your friend Peter are putting new shingles on a roof pitched at 25 degrees. You're sitting on the very top of the roof when Peter, who's at the edge of the roof directly below you, five meters away, asks you for a box of nails. Rather than carry the 2.5 kilogram box of nails down to Peter, you decide to give the box a push and have it slide down to him. If the coefficient of kinetic friction between the box and the roof is 0.55, with what speed should you push the box to have it gently come to rest um, right at the edge of the roof? So after 5 meters. So we're going to start by doing a picture, obviously. This is the always first step in solving a physics problem. This uh, problem doesn't come with a picture, so we're going to have to make our own. So there's the roof. That's you sitting at the top. We have your friend Peter and you with your nails, uh, Peter sitting at the bottom of the roof and the distance between you and him is 5 meters. The mass of the box was given as 2.5 kilograms and we're looking for the initial velocity, that means the, the velocity that you have to give the box so that the box can make it all the way to Peter and stop right at uh, Peter's location. Uh, Final velocity therefore will be zero after traveling five meters. So you are given the distance, the mass, the coefficient of kinetic friction, and uh, you need to find the initial speed. So coefficient of kinetic friction, I'm going to write all the givens. So mu sub k is 0.55, v initial is what we're looking for, the final velocity is going to be zero, and the distance that the box needs to travel is five meters. All right, so there is a kinematics equation that relates uh, these quantities, the initial velocity, the final velocity, the distance, and it comes also, it relates the acceleration. That is the one with the squares. V final square equals V initial square plus two A delta X. For this problem, we know that the box is supposed to stop at the, after traveling five meters, so the final velocity must be zero. The distance traveled is five, and the initial velocity we're looking for and in this equation, if we only knew how much is the acceleration of that box, what acceleration is the box going to do have as it slides down the incline, then, then we'll be basically ready to give an answer because then in that equation, everything will be known and we'll just be solving for V initial. So that tells us that we need to focus on finding that acceleration. Now acceleration, if you learn anything in these four chapters, you should have learned that Acceleration is related to the net force. That's Newton's second law. <clears throat> the acceleration is the net force divided by the mass. So to figure out the acceleration of the box, we're going to have to look at the forces acting on the box. And to figure out the forces acting on the box, we're going to have to do a free body diagram for the box. So our free body diagram is going to have uh, the force, the normal force that the roof is going to put on the box going that way, perpendicular to the surface of the roof. We call that F sub n. We're going to have the weight of the box. It's going to call that mg. Mass times g gives us the weight of the box straight down. Uh, the roof, the angle is 25 degrees. So the angle between the weight of the box and the y-axis, the perpendicular to the roof, is also going to be 25 this analysis of the angles, we've done it many, many times before. So this should be like second nature to know that that angle between the weight and the vertical and the uh, perpendicular to the roof is going to be 25 degrees. So that's, um, those are two forces. The third force acting on the box is clearly the force of kinetic friction. The box is going down the roof, sliding down the roof, so the force of kinetic friction must be up the roof. F sub k for kinetic friction. Those are all the forces that we have acting on that box. Uh, some people like to put the force that you put on the box, uh, put it as a, a vector going uh, down the incline because you assume that you have to put a force to make the box move. That's a classic mistake for this problem. The thing is that we're looking for the velocity. That is the velocity that the box is going to have after you left it moving. So you apply a force, you pushed it. After the box leaves contact with your hand, the box has a certain velocity. 
that's the moment when they want you to calculate the velocity. So what I'm trying to tell you is that the force that you put, put on the box is responsible for having given the box that velocity. But after the box leaves your hand, your force is not in the box anymore. Forces are the result of interactions. You cannot store force in an object. No matter how hard you apply, uh, apply a force to an object, the moment you let go of the object, the object has zero force acting on it. The object could have velocity, it could have momentum when we talk about momentum, but it doesn't have force. So please don't make that mistake. The forces acting on the box at any given moment as it's sliding down the incline are shown in the free body diagram, and they're all due to interactions currently occurring between the box and something else with the incline, with the surface of the roof, and with planet Earth. Those are the three forces that we see there. So after you have your free body diagram, what you want to do is analyze the sum of the forces in the x direction and make it equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Then you'll do the same thing for the y components of the forces to give you the y component of the acceleration. So we're gonna do the x components first. So we're looking at the all the forces that have x component. So looking at our at our free body diagram, you see that the weight has an x component. Again, you must have done this a bunch of times by now. So mg sine of 25 is gonna be the x component of the weight. The other force that is in the x direction is the force of kinetic friction, but that one goes with a negative sign because it's pointing up the incline. And we said that down the incline is the positive direction for x. So mg sine 25 minus fk, that's all we have going on in the x direction. So this should be equal to the mass times the acceleration of the box in the x direction. Now an equation that we're gonna be using here because we have the force of kinetic friction present is the equation that tells us that the force of kinetic friction is the coefficient times the normal. So our task is gonna be then to figure out the normal so that we can know what is the force of friction so that we can plug it into the top equation to get the acceleration. That would be the plan that we have at this point. So to fig figure out how much is the normal force, F sub n, we're gonna have to look at the sum of the forces in the y direction equals the mass times the acceleration in the y. So the forces that have y components are clearly the normal, F sub n, and then the weight of the box has a component along the y-axis which we can get by doing the mg cosine of 25 degrees. And it is negative because that component is pointing into the incline, which is the negative y direction. So those are the only two forces with a y component. The sum of them equals the mass times the acceleration in the y, but the box doesn't accelerate in the vertical direction. The box only accelerates in the horizontal direction horizontal being the direction along the incline, along the roof. That's what we call the X direction. So the acceleration in the Y direction for the nail is zero. Again, the Y axis is not the Y that you might be thinking that is vertical. The Y axis was chosen to be perpendicular to the roof. If that's the Y direction, there's no acceleration along the Y direction. So we cancel that out, put a zero on the right hand side, and that gives us the force, the normal force acting on the box of nails. The normal force should be equal to mg cosine of 25. So now that we know the normal force, we can plug it into the equation for the force of kinetic friction. And once we know the coefficient of kinetic, uh, the force of kinetic friction, we put it into the top equation and we will be able to solve for the acceleration. So mg sine of 25, or sine of theta minus mu k f sub n, where f sub n is mg cosine theta. We just did that two seconds ago. Equals the mass times the acceleration of the box of nails. So notice that there is a mass in every term in this equation, both on the left and on the right. So we could divide by m everywhere, therefore canceling the mass. And I'm gonna write down here what's the final result for the acceleration which is going to be g. Notice both terms have a g, so I'm going to factor out the g. g factor of sine of theta minus mu k times the cosine of theta. Put 
output missing bar here cosine of theta all right so let's just plug in the numbers we have the angle we have a mu k we know how much is g so 9.8 times meters per second squared times the sine of 25 degrees minus 0 0.55 which was given mu k is 0 0.55 cosine of 25 degrees so plug that in your calculator and you will get minus 0 0.74 meters per second square so notice that the value that of the acceleration that we're getting is a negative value that makes sense because we know that the box of nails is slowing down as it goes down the incline so whenever an object is moving in one direction but it is slowing down the acceleration is opposite to the velocity otherwise it wouldn't be slowing down if the acceleration pointed in the same direction as the velocity then the object should be speeding up this box should not speed up as it comes to the bottom of the roof they said in the statement of the problem that box should stop gently as it gets to the bottom so it makes sense that the acceleration that we obtain is a negative number because the velocity is positive the acceleration is going to have to be negative to slow down the motion of the object so we got our answer for the acceleration we're one step away from finding the answer because in this equation we said before that in this equation if we plug in the acceleration we can solve for the initial velocity so that's what we're going to do now so v excuse me v initial square equals minus 2a times delta x now you remember that v finally is zero and we move the 2ax term we move it to the other side of the equal sign it goes with the minus i notice that that minus and the minus of the acceleration that we found is going to cancel we're going to get 2 times 0 0.74 multiplied by 5 meters it should be v initial square so multiply those numbers in your calculator take the square root of that to just get the speed of the box at the beginning and the answer is 2.73 meters per second.